now on display, the radical paintings of a woman who didn't quite fit the mold, any mold, Alice Neal. Faith Saley is our guide. One of the reasons I painted was to catch life as it goes by, uh, right hot off the griddle. That's the voice of the late artist Alice Neal, who called herself a collector of souls. And those souls are now on display at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City. When people walk in and, mm -hmm. and meet this image, mm -hmm. what do you want it to tell them about the experience mm -hmm. they're gonna have with Alice Neal? Well, I hope that they're a bit shocked. <laughs> Kelly Baum is co-curator of the exhibit called Alice Neal, People Come First. Neal very often painted people and things that she wasn't supposed to, especially as a woman artist. And here, the candor, honesty, um, forthrightness with which she depicted the pregnant body. It's almost um, a challenge. It is a challenge um, because this is a body, especially an unclothed body that we're not used to seeing and that frankly we're not supposed to see. Neil was born in 1900 and grew up in Colwyn, Pennsylvania. And, well, here's how she felt about that. I lived in a small town. I hated it. So at 21, she enrolled in the Philadelphia School of Design for Women. I deliberately went to a girl's school because I didn't want to be distracted by boys. I was a very good-looking girl, so my whole life was disrupted by men. Indeed, it was a disruptive man, Cuban artist Carlos Enriquez, with whom she moved to Havana to make art. Their marriage was brief and tragic. Neil painted her way through her own pain and honored the hard realities of others, especially when she moved to Spanish Harlem during the Great Depression, where she captured the people in her neighborhood. These are two girls that Neil met in Spanish Harlem. Carmen and Antonia Encarnacion. They're not sitters whose visages would normally have been recorded in what we think of as, as fine art. She was very aware of the struggles that girls like these would have faced growing up. Poverty, underinvestment from the city, uh, illness. Now turn your head a little away, that's a little more away. With me, painting was more than a profession. It was also an obsession. I had to paint, you know. You didn't sit for Neil expecting to be flattered. <laughs> Randall Griffey is co-curator of the exhibit. She's unflinching, candid. There's an egalitarian streak about her that comes through rich, poor, black, white, brown, um, men, women. Neil's unblinking focus on people meant she refused to create the kind of abstract expressionism that was bringing acclaim to her contemporaries in the 40s and 50s. It's actually one of the reasons that she really hasn't been canonized. Modern art has been written about mostly as a succession of avant-garde-isms, and Neil doesn't fall into that. I feel like she's peopleism. <laughs> yes, exactly. Humanism really was her ism. Someone who knows firsthand what it was like to be revealed by Alice Neal is her daughter-in-law, Ginny Neal, who's married to one of Alice's two sons, Hartley. She could see you better than you could see yourself in some way. I love Ginny in the striped shirt because that wasn't about what I looked like, that was about what I was feeling. I think she caught my anxiety, my... I think she caught... talk about zeitgeist. I think she caught that anxiety of the age, 1969, 1970. Everything was going on. Did she suggest that you sit that way? Or is that the yes, way? Yes, well, I sit such, that way. It's <laughs> such a statement. Ginny, who knew Alice Neal for 20 years before the artist died in 1984, says there was much more to her sweet-looking mother-in-law than met the eye. Did you call Alice mom? No. Did the kids call her grandma? <laughs> no. No, goodness. Um, what did she see? She used to say, I have this apple pie face, but that's not who's inside. Mom and apple pie, that's not me. <laughs> 
Yet Neil's paintings are as American as apple pie in their honest revelations of who we are, the overlooked, the flamboyant, the underrepresented, and the unapologetic. I painted in obscurity for years and years. If I didn't paint all the time, I probably wouldn't live. That's what keeps me alive. 